G'day guys, the dreaded chef down in Babinda. It's about 30 k's from Cairns and it's an absolutely beautiful country town. Depending who you talk to, the name of Babinda either means mountain or water. Judging by the clouds that we have, I think it's water. But we've got an amazing cook-up planned and we're going to a campsite down the road and it's very appropriately named. But first, we're gonna drop, drop into the Babinda Meat Mart here to speak to Mark who has prepared something for us to cook and I'm seriously excited. Stick around and I'll show you what it is. I'm inside the Babinda Meat Mart. It's cleared up outside a little bit, so it's looking fantastic. I thought I'd jump in and talk to Mark real quick and, and pick up the absolutely amazing looking beast that we're going to be cooking down at Paradise Camps. But for now, I thought, why not take a moment to talk to Mark? So I've got him here, I've taught him out of the kitchen, and I thought, why not ask him a few questions? So Mark is the man behind all the amazing stuff that happens here. And, and Mark, like, tell us about yourself. How long have you been here? Awesome. Well, actually, um, Jeff, I've actually been here since 13. And as you may know, I'm 25 now, so that is 12 years. But funny enough, I'm actually the son of um, the people who own this. My parents have owned the butcher shop wow. um, for about 35 years. And my dad's actually been a butcher in this place for over 40 years here. So he has quite a lot of experience uh, <laughs> in this shop. So That's a lot of cool. delicious meals being sold. That is like, very that true. That actually really, really excites me because being a family run business, you're able to master your craft early before you're able to take on the reins and everything. So, 100%. so with that, said i imagine that you guys would have some very special things that are unique to this place that we wouldn't find anywhere else yeah what are those well some things that we take a lot of pride of um here uh, at the binder meat mart the first one i would say is our uh crumb steak uh, our crumb steak where we go uh, seam it all out uh, properly get rid of all the gristle so you can eat it straight through it's really yummy yeah. and coming from a, a traditional italian heritage uh we stick with the tradition and how we make it and um, yeah, there's some special family um, additions that we add in that we won't mention on camera, but it makes it um, really special for our clients to come and buy. But um, another one I'd like to tell you actually, Chef, is that we make our own uh, homemade bacon here as well. It's wood smoked. So uh, yeah, I know, right? I'm like get excited as I talk about it. That's uh, breakfast, that is <laughs> breakfast right Breakfast there. every morning, come on. <laughs> we're all about bacon here. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, we, we not only cure it ourselves, but we smoke it in our own smokehouse. And so, and all home, home smoked, home um, cured as well. So Love it, absolutely delicious. love it. That is, that is just straight up beautiful breakfast, straight from the land, <laughs> yeah. straight to our plate For in sure. our own soil. They're absolutely brilliant. So I did look in the cabinet before, there was something that caught my eye and I haven't seen anywhere else before. And you didn't mention it, so I really want you to talk about yeah. this. But there's the salami sausages. Yes, like, of course, what? of course, yes. Like, well, these are our Northern Italian um, sausages and, and they're, very, um, they're very unique for us as we've been doing them uh, for many years. Actually, they were making them when my father was like 15 years old in this shop. So, so like, I mean, we've added to them and we've, and we've changed them up a little bit to suit us and, and to make it significant to the binder. Uh, but they're definitely a fan fave. Now, I can't go into full detail about what's inside of them because I don't want to let that out. But what I will say is that they are unique to our shop. Um, they, they are pork and they've got a little bit of veal in them as well. Uh, they got your red wine, uh, and garlic, and salt and pepper, and a few other ingredients there to um, make them super right, special. Right. So. It sounds like I might have to get some and take it to the dreaded lab. Please, and, and that sounds it. good. <laughs> See what I can taste in those sausages. So we're here to pick up this amazing beast, yes. but before we do that, just where can people find you in the online world? Like, yep. so right. give yourself a like, let everyone know so they can give you that follow awesome. that, that you much deserve. So, so good, thank you, Chef. Yeah. Hey guys, you can find us on Facebook, uh, you can find us on Instagram, we've also got a website that's up and running, so you can go on our website, if you want to know more about us, about our history or whatnot, you can go on there uh, and you can find all the information that you need, um, go, go online and follow us on one of those um, social media um, right. pages. Awesome, so before I kick him back up, back up there okay. to get the stuff that I'm eagerly awaiting to cook, do, do yourself a favor, let's get the conversation going. We're, we're gonna have Mark like monitoring the comments and stuff. So ask all your favorite butcher questions, all those little things that you don't know. 
you know, like in the comments below, and I'm sure Mark will jump on and answer yep. him. Like, um, he's a very helpful bloke. He's helped me out, and I've called him up last minute and asked his favour, and he's managed to come through. So I'm sure a question wouldn't be too hard. This butcher shop is amazingly busy, which is a good sign. So before we're interrupted by your amazing customers, <laughs> let's go back to the question of grass-fed versus grain-fed. Which yep. one's better, and what does it mean? Awesome. So you may have heard the term of um, grass-fed beef and grain-fed beef, and it's really simple, really. Uh, grass-fed basically means that the animal has eaten grass its whole life and grain fed uh, basically means that in a part of its life it has uh, been fed grain possibly in a feedlot uh, more than likely in a feedlot I should say it could be 70 day grain fed or 100 day grain fed uh, which you mostly see if you go get a grain fed steak from a restaurant of some form but us here at Babinda Meat Mart we do specialise in grass fed beef as we believe it offers um, great flavour uh, for the customer and it tastes a lot better as well yeah brilliant awesome thank you so much man I get to ask that question a lot yeah. And I was like, you know what? Let's answer this question. And who better to answer that question than yourself? Yeah. So, and at this place right now. So, yeah, I was like, yeah. absolutely amazing. So, thank but you, thank you so much, Mark. I really, really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you pulling this together at the last minute. So, we're going to cut the camera now. We don't want them to see it yet. <laughs> no, no, all good. <laughs> all good. We'll deal with the business end and we'll get on with it. Sounds yeah, great. Thanks, man. I thanks, you. guys. Here we are at Paradise Camps. It's been a bit of a mission to get here and we, we ran around yesterday and got a whole heap of like amazing scenery, you know, kind of footage and, and shots with a drone and everything like that. But here's the most exciting part. Just over here to my side is the amazing beast that we're going to be cooking. So follow me over and we're going to unveil it. And I think I see someone that I recognize as well. <laughs> Rightio. So, we're not cooking this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to taste very good, and I don't think there's enough rub in the world to make him taste good either. But Buck, mate, how are you? Good, mate. Thanks for having us, Ryan. All good. Good All to good. see you again, mate. Look, I'm excited to have you on board for this shoot because I'm hoping that I can be able to help you with your backyard cooks. Yes. So when I watch those, I don't sit there and cringe as a qualified <laughs> chef. <laughs> I'm a bit but, rough, mate, yeah. But that's all right. Like, I, I love a good backyard cook, and you do yeah. an amazing job. So I'm, I'm happy to have you on board today. And Thanks, I think this mate. is going to be a bloody good cook. Yeah. But we've got this beast here, and I think it's about time we unveil it. All right, about mate. what we're cooking. So I have kind of wrapped it all up so our little flies couldn't get it. But here we go. Let's get them all down. Wow. So, we. so this here. I can take them for you, Yeah, mate. Have, a, yep. have a hold of those. So this here is a 22 kilo lamb from New South Wales and courtesy of the Babinda Meat Mart. Yeah. So I seen Mark yesterday and we, we picked this bad boy up. Yep. So what we're gonna do today, guys, is we're gonna actually get this off this hook. We're just doing this a big fancy reveal because we like to do fun stuff every now and then. And so what we're gonna do is split it over and butterfly it. And we've built a barbecue specifically to go with this as well. So stick around and we'll show you all how it's done. A little bit's happened since we, we did the intro for the lamb, but essentially what we've done is we've got a very anti-vegan device here <laughs> for a very anti-vegan dish. So we've made a bit of a crucifix. And so, you know, have we set this up on the front lawn of our house, the neighbors would probably be asking some serious questions. But we've got we've done it here at the back of Paradise Camps with the brick yeah. barbecue over there, getting nice and ready. But as you know with me, I never cook anything just as it is, it always has to have flavour and we've, we've got the lamb rub here that I've made and I'm just going to spray some oil on as a binder yep. uh, real quick and yep. then I've got two containers there so okay. one will be for you and we'll just sprinkle on right. a nice good coat. So no I'm worries. using oil as a binder just so it holds the, the rub on Yes. because I don't want like the rub to fall off, that would just be an absolute waste of the rub. Yeah. But like on top of that, I don't want anything heavy. So a lot of like barbecues and stuff, we'll use like mustards and you know, like some like sauce based dishes. And I, I want this light because I really want the flavor of the lamb to come out and I don't want that mustard to overpower. Yes. So we've done the old oil bit. I'm just gonna chuck that down there. But yeah, we'll just, we'll just crack open these containers of rub. And all we're gonna do is just sprinkle it on. Right up, mate, you show me how you want it done. I don't yeah. wanna go too heavy. So we're lucky it's a big beast, so we can actually go quite heavy handed on okay, it. Okay mate, yep. And so we'll just give it a nice even coat all the way over. I had a little sneak peek of this rub before guys, and I tell you, oh, 
It's spectacular, mate. The flavours in it. Yeah, so what incredible. I was aiming for with this rub is that, like, with the usual suspects of lamb, you know, we, we anticipate to always have, like, rosemary and thyme and oregano, a bit of basil and, you know, all that stuff. But a lot of a lot of Greeks and stuff like that use, uh, like, a lot of citrus. Yes. And I really wanted to bring that out. So this rub has got some citrus tones in it. So, like, you've got that nice zing. And then you've got a little bit of sweetness in there as well to counteract it, so it's not so tarty. And it, like, it just creates like a bit of an experience of the palate yeah, mate. using the taste buds at the front and the rear of your tongue. So, um, yeah, it just covers it all, and so you have this whole mouth experience. Oh. It's going to be really good. Even the smell's beautiful, mate. Like yeah, the, yeah. The smell of it. So I always like to use really good aromatics as well, and you just can't go wrong when you've got like herbs yeah. and stuff like that in it. So what we're going to do, man, is like now we've got a good even coat on here. We're just going to pat that in. I was going to say, one thing I did learn from you, mate, <laughs> even though they're called a rub, we don't rub it in. We pat it no, on. Like, well, yeah. see, like, it's really, like, so this hand's quite quite clean as it is, like that. So if I start rubbing, all I'm doing is just taking yeah. the rub straight off, and I'm rubbing it off the, the lamb anyways. Like, so what's the point? Yes. So I'm just going to put some back on. And that's where that binder's come in, you know? Like, you just pat it on, and it, it'll stick into the meat and yes. less likely it to be on your yeah. hand. But... So we'll do that, and then after we do, after we pat it all in, we'll flip it over and do the rest. It'll probably so. stick better on the on the other side where there's a bit more meat yeah, in that too, mate. Yeah, definitely. We've got the lamb down here uh, cooking and it's, it's looking good, it's smelling so good already. I really don't want to wait for it to be cooked, it's smelling that good, but I know I have to. So I thought what I'll do is I'll uh, have an opportunity to add more flavour to it and I've got some beer that I'm going to use to base that lamb to keep it like moist as it cooks so it doesn't dry out. And on my way in here at Paradise Camps I actually noticed this lemon myrtle tree so I thought, you know what, I'll sacrifice a beer I'll get some lemon myrtle and turn that into a basting brush and we'll put a little bit extra flavour onto it. So I'm just going to cut some of it off and just like make sure I've got enough to make a bit of a, um, a brush with. And I'm just going to like tie it all together with a bit of twine and happy days. So we've made ourselves a nice basting brush here and I've just got a little little tub here with some beer, some of my rub that I've put on with the lamb and I've just added a, some sugar as well to it to just offset the bitterness of the beer. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my little brush here, get it into the beer and just kind of flick it on there like that just to give it a base to keep it moist. If the smoke doesn't kill my eyes I'll be able to see what I'm doing. It's really important that we keep it moist throughout the cooking so it doesn't burn. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Just to give it a good coat all the way around. And that lemon myrtle is just going to impart flavour as well as I do this. I've just stepped away from the lamb real quick because I've seen Dee buzzing around. She is an absolutely busy person here taking care of this amazing place that we're staying and I thought, wait, quick, get over here so we can have a quick yarn. And, and Dee, thank you so much for letting me come here today and, and thank you so much for letting me like just basically take over your place. Like, I don't know, like you said, yeah, I've got this area but I've kind of taken advantage of that and I've got myself spread everywhere. But so thank you so much for accommodating us. But I thought it would be a really good opportunity for us to find out 
you know, a little bit more about Paradise Camps. Yeah. Like it's it's an extremely appropriately named place. Like as I was walking along, I was like, this really truly is paradise. paradise. Like it is so appropriately named. So how long have you been here at you know and operating this like this place? Well we bought the property about 14 years ago. We had a look around the area and this was the best spot. It had that beautiful freshwater creek. Mm -hmm. um, and we had lots of friends coming and then friends of friends and then friends of friends of friends. Um, and we decided to open it up and start a campground. And so we've been operating for just on four months now, Ryan. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So it's kind of just organically yeah, grown. Like, it has. And so word of mouth has really helped you out, obviously. Yeah. Like, and um, so, you know, like, what are some of the key features? Like, if I was someone that's, you know, traveling two cans from our southern states, yeah. like, our borders are going to be opening yeah. soon. So, you know, people are wanting to get out and travel. So what are some of the things that they can expect here besides amazing watering holes that are behind us here? Yeah. Like, what else, what else can we look for? Like, so I would say our biggest uh, change is we're very, very pet friendly. We love your dogs and your animals to come. We have very large, spacious campgrounds in a bush setting. Um, we offer self-contained camping um, and we want people to come with their caravans or their camper trailers and just have a, a relaxing time, come with their pets and just really enjoy themselves. Mm. Yeah, I did notice a few little furry <laughs> fur babies running around and you know, especially now they've got the lamb cooking, they're yeah. definitely around smelling that and licking <laughs> yeah. their lips. So like, I imagine there might be a few more as the campers yeah. come rolling in and you know, like uh, it seems to be quite a popular place already, you know, yeah. like uh, you know, over the far last few weeks of dropping in and out, I've seen like it's quite filled up. So. You know, for those who don't want to miss out on a spot, yeah. where, where would they go to, to make a booking? Okay, so we have uh, Wiki Camps. We're on Camps Australia. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, our website is nearly done, so keep an eye out. But Paradise Camps, um, they'll be able to go on and book directly online. Otherwise, there is a phone number attached. Hey, speaking Ruby. of furries. Yeah, you? speaking of She's our security guard, so you'll meet her when you come on site. Hey, Ruby. Um, yeah, so there's lots of ways that you can book. Um, okay, cool. And yeah. That's brilliant. Awesome. Thank you so much. Like, um, I did have a little little walk around, yep. and so I did notice that there's a lot of like fruit trees. So, what are some of the trees that we can see here? Like, okay, so mainly we have rambutans and mangosteens. So they fruit about February, March. So if you want to camp, then a few might fall off the tree for you. <laughs> um, we've also got citrus. We've got banana. Mm. Um, you know, we've got the carambola star fruit. We've got the black sapote. We've got a lychee, which never flowers, like our mango. Mango tree, so I'll swap Annoying. mangoes for some rambutans or. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Um, yeah, so and we've got lots of herbs growing and yeah, chocos. I, I did take advantage of the lemon myrtle before. Yeah. Like it was excellent. I know it was up near the main house, so I did like a little covert yeah. mission to grab some, but yeah, and but, our um, basil and yeah. parsley. With you know, there's a few things around. And some of the like one of the biggest bamboo trees that I've ever seen as well. I've been oh, like, amazing. Holy wow, and like that is massive. So cut it down, like taking stuff out, made furniture, toys. Um, we've had scout groups down here and they've made bridges. We just Lovely. can't get rid of it. Yeah, wow, it, just, <laughs> so. it was amazing. So if you ever get down here, like I do encourage you to stay here and I do encourage you to check out that bamboo. <laughs> it, is, it is absolutely unreal. And there's some really, really friendly horses as well. They love a pat, like I learned that and yesterday. And apples and carrots, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Dee, thank you so much for taking the time. I really, really appreciate it. And, and for you guys that, that are watching this, definitely do yourselves a favor and come here to Paradise Camps. If you have any questions, definitely connect with them on the Paradise Camps socials, like Instagram and Facebook, yep. and your soon website as yes. well, where you'll be able to contact further Fingers and ask crossed. those questions. So yep. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dee. I absolutely love this place and I definitely will be back again. Thank you for coming and I'm looking forward to sampling that beautiful lamb. I'll promise to save you some. There's 22 oh, kilos. really? And maybe just a small piece? <laughs> All right, maybe a little bit. Maybe okay. a, a slight kilo or two. Okay. <laughs>
It's been a bit of a cook so far already. So we've had the lamb on for about five hours now, and I thought, you know what? Before I have too many ginger beers, <laughs> I get a little bit silly around. How yeah, good are they too? They go down easy. Mine's empty, and I don't know where it is. So <laughs> it's probably a sign that I don't have any more. But um, I thought, you know what? Like before I get too silly. Let's make this sauce. So I've got yeah. a, a new sauce that I want to cook up today. It's a Croc Q sauce. So I'm I'm friends with with the owner of FNQ Spirits and Cans, and you know with this cook I really wanted to keep it local as much as I yeah, can. Mate. So yeah. he's helping out heaps with getting me this amazing bottle of Croc Piss, which is an award-winning rum, and he's got an amazing amount of like different spirits and flavors. So there's yeah. too many to mention, but all of them have won awards. And just walking into that distillery <laughs> is Croc Piss very. North Queensland issue, very, isn't very, yeah. very. So, Good stuff. but a part of the dreaded chef is all about showing people that they can cook this stuff at home, and so having you here is really, really helpful because yeah. I want you to make this sauce under my guidance. Oh, right, eh? So, okay, I've made it easy for you. I've got measuring cups and spoons here, and we've okay, got mate. the ingredients here. Yep. Now, this sauce recipe that we're using, this is not going to be enough for a 20 kilo lamb, but we want to keep it so everyone like you at home can cook this for like a, a smaller pork belly yeah. or, or lamb or whatever yes. you need. So we're going to keep it simple for now and then we'll add more ingredients to all make right, it yeah. fitting for yeah. that. So too easy. So first of all, we need to get 30 mils of the Which is a nip basically, mate. Yeah, yep. one nip. So you'll probably be best off using the tablespoon. Yeah. Yep, there you go. One tablespoon. Get two of those. In straight into the... Straight in. Straight, straight in, in, mate. In, straight in. 30 mil right, of crock yep. piss. One more. One more. Yeah, let's get a bit silly around the fire. Right on, mate. Rightio. Done. So next up. It smells good. Yeah, I won't, I won't sip any We're going to sample this later. <laughs> <laughs> it smells bloody good. Then we'll good. get real silly. Right, so next one up here, we need six tablespoons of the raspberry jam. So I'm just using Coddy's raspberry jam. Um, six the, of these, mate. Six, six tablespoons. Of those, you got this. Just don't lose count, okay? Like one, two, three. Now you can use any jam that you want. Um, the the smoother the better, because if you got chunks of fruit in it, that those chunks of fruit are not going to go away There's when you simmer it down. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, it's the smoother the better. Hold on to that. You're still going to need that right. spoon. Okay. So next up, we're going to need two tablespoons of the Worcestershire sauce. The old Lee and Perrins, which old. Yeah. Traditional one, mate. Yeah. That's it. Don't ask She's me not to a twister. Worcestershire, though. Nah, it's Worcestershire. a little pop toppy there. There you go. Two of those bad boys in. Right, eh? Almost there for one. That's it. One. One there. And another one. Really simple recipe. Yeah. Right, so oh, now. You can smell that. You can smell yeah. the flavour coming out already. So right now, what we've got in here, we've got the, the smokiness from the spirit. Yes. We've got the sweetness from the jam. And that jam is also going to help with giving it a little bit of body. But to really bring it home with the body and bring some like complete richness through, we're going to need two tablespoons of the tomato sauce. Right on, mate. So this will kind of bulk it out and also bring it together. Um, and, and it'll provide just like that, that back heat. So, yep, perfect. Two there, mate. Two there. Righto. Now, we've just introduced some tartiness as well from the tomato sauce. Yes. So we kind of need to balance that out, and that's where the, the sugar, sugar comes You're in. You're righto. So we need one tablespoon of that. I would suggest, because you've got a dirty spoon, just use, you do two half te teaspoons. Righto. And that'll bring it out. Two, two half teaspoons. Yeah, so, sorry. Well, sorry, four of those. Or four one. of those. Righto, mate. Yeah. There you go. One, two, there's a little bit of three. That's right, a little bit of excess. Four. All, good. all right. A couple right, extra grains won't hurt. Nah, nah, it's not going to break the bank. Okay, so. mate. Yep. All right, so all we're going to do now is just give that a mix. And I know you guys can't see in there, but that's okay. Like, you'll see the end result. I'll get some footage of it simmering down. Yeah. So we're just going to simmer this down for 10 minutes. And once it's all combined well, it's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. So it should be really, really good. It'll glaze up nicely. So the sugars in the jam and the sugar, the white sugar that we added will caramelize onto the lamb, you know, or the pork or whatever you're cooking oh. with this sauce. And then it'll just blend in with that rub as well. Yeah. And it'll just become one complete oh, package mate. of yeah. deliciousness, really. So we'll just mix this up a little bit now, but then we'll get it onto the stove. Yeah. We'll initially start to get it as a high heat, and then once it starts simmering and, and boiling, we'll drop it right down and let right. it simmer for like about 10 minutes. Because we don't want, there's a lot of sugar in the jam, there's a lot yeah. of sugar that we've added in, so we don't want it to burn on the bottom. Yes. Because that's just going to create a bit of, a bit of bit of taste. But once you like give it a good whisk and get those lumps out, we're all good to go. I can smell that. I can smell the flavors coming out from here, guys. I'm not exaggerating. They're just straight up my nose, it smells beautiful. 
I mean, you could taste it now, but if you taste it too much, you probably won't be able to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, the lean's going to be good enough as it is now, but this is just going to take it to another level. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did a very similar recipe before when I did the um, uh, the, the black cherry um, yes. glaze, barbecue glaze, and that was similar to what you tasted yep. as well. Beautiful. And I, I did a video on my channel like a, yeah. a while ago of these um, camembert stuff, like, uh, oh, sorry, they were meatball stuff, camembert cheese wrapped in bacon. Oh. And that was yeah. cooked on the Weber that I had at home. So. Well, I know my brother did them too, mate, and they were spot on. They yeah. were beautiful. Yeah. All right, so that's combined nicely. So what we're going to yeah. do is get it on the stove. You know, once we add a little bit more for 20 kilos worth yeah. of yeah. land, yeah. we'll get it on the stove, reduce it down, and it should be schmeck. All right, mate, yeah. beauty. Let's do it, All eh? Right. The lamb is ready for basting, the sauce is ready, the coals are still going cooking the veg and they're almost done. I've made myself a lovely mop out of a stick and a chucks cloth, so all I'm going to do is literally dip the mop in this sauce and just paint it on and get that glaze. And this will cook, cook out, tack up nicely and just deliver that extra flavour we need for this lamb and it's going to be absolutely sensational. Twenty two point four kilos of lamb is cooked, it is rubbed, it is glazed, it was cooked over five for six hours, Buck. You've been here through the whole lot of I it. I have mate, yes. Look. I like we've been drooling and tasting little bits all day, as you can see we've been pulling little bits yeah. where we can. Um, I'll, I really want to grab a leg and carve into it, but first, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please do me a favor and like this video, subscribe and share it. It seriously helps me out a lot. Like, it does, Like seriously, right? yeah. seriously yeah. helps me out a lot. And like, you know, this cook here wasn't, wasn't exactly cheap either. There's no. a lot of stuff that goes into it. So just that little like, that comment, that share, it, it, it motivates me to keep doing this stuff. Exactly so, right, mate. Yeah, let's so, get Ryan to a thousand subscribers, guys, and he can yeah. do more of this type of stuff. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I've got a, a nice carving <laughs> knife here. <laughs> so an unfortunate deer has sacrificed its antler for us. Yeah. Um, and this isn't really vegan friendly, this clip, is it? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, the, the lamb probably ate vegan friendly stuff, but at that point, that was probably about it. That's about as so, far as it goes, mate. But, but um, let's grab a leg here and kind of just pull it off. Let's, let's just use that. Do right you really there. need to carve it? It's going to be a pulled lamb, mate, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And we'll just get look a look nice, that. yeah, <laughs> look. Just slice and it's good. Yeah. It's just you could pull that off of the tongs, guys, so, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, funny you say that. We got some. Got here. some here. Here, look. You might as well have a sneaky taste test. All right, mate. Grab, grab whatever you, whatever you want there. Here we go. Go over this side here, yeah, mate. Yeah. There you go. Look at this. Just peeling off there. Yeah. This outside crunchy stuff. Can I have a little taste of that? Yeah, one? yeah. That's that's the whole point. Oh, that's a bit. Go for it. A bit too much. Oh. Well, I might keep this bit. What do you reckon? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's you want some stuff. Look at okay. that. Absolutely beautiful, <laughs> mate. Grab that knife and we'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's carve a little bit more up here. Like, wow, we. There's a good little slice coming. There we go. There's a bit. Oh, got that's to navigate cooked beautifully, bones. mate. Eh? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Let's just sit that there. Like, why not? But yeah, have a look at that. Like, so that's six hours over coals. Like. All the glaze and all the rub and everything, and we've got all the trimmings off camera. We've got a crew behind yeah. us that are starving, so look at that. Look, I think what we'll do is look we'll, at the skin we'll guys. hurry up and get into this before it before it gets too cold, and and we'll uh, have some good beverages. So ma it. massive leg there, massive leg there, couple of big shoulders, and then yeah. uh, the meat's just going to peel off those ribs, guys. Yeah, so what have we got here, about? 
15, 20 maybe? Yeah, about that. Yeah, okay. for dinner, that's yeah. going to feed everyone with a bit of pasta salad, some potatoes, mate, cauliflower. Oh. What else do we put in there, D? Yeah. Stuff pumpkin. Mm. Beautiful. All the good stuff. They can yeah. enjoy that. We'll have this. What do you reckon? Mate, well done today. Yeah. This is this has been uh, new. I've seen a lamb and a pig on a spit before, but I haven't seen it done over the uh, the charcoal. So. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. Like this is so you and your dad, mate. Well yeah. done today. That was absolutely brilliant. It's a really bit of was. a bucket list cook, so I'm yeah. happy that we've been able to do it and yeah. been able to do it here with Paradise Camps and yeah. you know had the help of like uh, like F and Q Spirits as well and a bit of meat mark for the lamb. So yeah. you know, beautiful food, beautiful ingredients at a beautiful location, yeah. a beautiful company. What, yeah. what more could you ask for? So. And that's the best times to come now, and that's. <laughs> Time to taste it. Yeah, and have another couple of drinks. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's going to be. A, enjoy the rest of the night, mate. Yeah, well, thank you so much for this. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We're going to get into this. Until next time, have fun, stay safe, and keep cooking. Let me know what you're cooking. Drop a comment down below. Let's get the conversation started. Yeah, let's get the dreaded chef to a thousand uh, subscribers too, guys. Let's do it. Awesome. Let's thank go. you. See you all. Right on.